Hey guys, since I did my last video on how I build a tube chassis, I wanted to do another one and give it a little bit more info. This one is going to be, uh, I'm gonna do a couple more things to show the differences and the different ways you can do things and a little bit more about the entire process of what I do uh, to create the drawings and templates and things like that that I've been using. So anyway, uh, last night I began building the cha this chassis that you see here. Um, the, I've got about, three or four hours in it as it sits. Um, it's still quite a bit of work, but things go so much faster with the templates. Anyway, I wanna show you exactly uh, where the process starts and how I get to uh, the actual build process and then a little bit of the build process itself. Okay, so getting into the full process of how I do this. I start by uh, typically finding a car that I want to model after. Now, Pirate 4x4 is a huge website for full-size off-roading. A great place to find uh, builds and inspiration for things like that. I ran across this truck. It's called the uh, Scout 800 Woods Runner build. Now he had he started with an old Scout 800 and turned it into a pretty good looking buggy. Now the nice thing about some of these trucks is they do full builds on them and it gives you some good shots of different uh, parts of the chassis as well as the tube work and how they did specific things. And if you want to replicate those details, you can use some of these pictures for reference. So, for example, there is this picture here, which shows the wheelbase of the truck and uh, the chassis and everything like that. So, what I did is I actually saved this picture and then I bring that into my CAD program. Now, CAD is something that isn't necessarily easy to just pick up if you don't know it. So, if, uh, if you're not well versed in CAD, this might be a step that you, uh, you skip and maybe just download the templates that I will... Um, inevitably create from these pictures. So anyway, this picture is one that I would take. And then the other thing with this build is that he didn't have any like great, like perfect on side shots. Everything's kind of at a skew and things like that. So all I had, to, all I was able to do was look at these pictures as a reference and then uh, build my CAD model off of different pictures on here that I found and things like that. I'm not trying to teach anybody how to use CAD or anything like that. That would take uh, forever if you don't already know how. And there's tons of other tutorial videos and things like that to go on. So anyway, I'm just showing you a little bit of the background about exactly what I do. Like I said, I use that side profile shot to be able to set my wheelbase and things like that. From there, I, uh, I scale that dimension to 12 and a half inches. That allows me to model everything off of a uh, SCX 10 chassis, which is the easiest base for something like this. And, uh, I already have a CAD model of the SCX-10 chassis, so I used that, uh, brought it in there, scaled it to uh, approximately a 4.75 inch tire because I'll be using the uh, Axial Maxxis Trepidors on this build, and then we went from there. So, now, there's a lot of work into creating these CAD models and things like that. Um, here you can see uh, where I've got the picture behind all the tube work and things like that. Now, my models are 3D. You can't see that in this view particularly, but um, I will. So this here shows you the model. Now this is just a line model. Each one of these things is just a line. It's not a tube. I use this to draw my, the shapes and everything that I want based off of the dimensions and uh, any other info I can take from the pictures. And then after I've done that, I take these tubes and I extrude the tube along a path. And what that allows me to do is uh, create the actual size of the bars. Now for this build, I decided to go with an eighth inch rod rather than a 3 16 that I normally use. So after I've uh, used that line work, I take an eighth inch rod and I extrude it along the path. And that is what allows me to get the actual thickness of each tube. And then I take those and I can separate those tubes individually since they're all individual pieces. And that allows me to create the individual templates for each individual tube simply by coming into my model. Here's, this is just a copy. These are all copies of the actual model. I'll come in there and just grab a tube and then I can move it. So now I have just that tube. Now, some things that I have to pay attention to is I have to make sure they're all rotated perfectly flat so that 
they, uh, when you, like if they were laid down on a piece of paper, you don't lose distance by a skew of an angle. So there's little things like that that come into play. But if you're uh, familiar with any CAD package, it's not that difficult. So now I have created all of these individual tubes and then I label each one like this is, these are my rocker tubes, these two. This is the, uh, the bar that goes along the center of the roof. It's rotated sideways so that I can see the curve that has just a little bit in the top. Um, and then the, so on and so forth all the way through the rest. Some of them I leave assembled so that when I actually bend and create the tubes, I can bring them up here, mark where they actually go, and then when I go to weld them, I have those reference points that match my model exactly. All right, for uh, this demonstration part, I'm going to do the C pillar. The C pillar is what goes from the top of the cab area. Uh, this is the B pillar. Come back and down and match up on this, uh, what I call the hip bar on this truck. Um, my template is right here on the sheet. Give you an idea. It's a, uh, it's a single bend piece and then comes down and it has a tapered cut here at the end. So I'll lay it down here on top of the template and then I just use a uh, kind of a fat sharpie and I mark the uh, starting point of the radius. Now that the starting point of the radius is very easy to see on the templates because there's a, uh, a line that actually denotes the start and end points. So then I will uh, take the rod here and I'll move it over. This is my uh, BAC Industries rod bender. If you need a little bender, uh, you can find this for about 35 bucks on Amazon now. Uh, the handle comes off, then there's these little dies that you can put on, and it comes with several different sizes. You take your, uh, your uh, rod that you've already got marked, you put it in the, uh, in the vise here, or in the vise, in the uh, bender. Now this tube is a little bit short, not for the actual tube, but just I don't want it to pull. So I'm going to hold it here against the, uh, the pin side and do my bend. So I've got my rough bend and now I'll check that against the template. And I went quite a bit too far, but with this, the smaller rod, you can bend it back very easily by hand. All right. So once you have the rod bent, and you've matched it up to your template. And it lays up on it just, uh, just perfectly to get that bend as close as you uh, possibly can. You take it back, lay the bar on top of your template. Again, you can use your Sharpie and mark the cut points. Okay, for the actual fabrication part of this thing, I'm gonna show you two, def uh, two different techniques. The first one is the method that I use mostly now, now and that is TIG welding. Now I use a Thermalark 95S TIG welder. It's a small DC only TIG welder, uh, runs off 110 volts so you can use it just to, you know, you don't have to have any special accommodations in your house other than just a good solid electrical source. Um, but that, that unit runs, um, in the $400 range and then you need to get a, a, a gas bottle, your welding hood, other little welding supplies and things like that. So it is kind of an expensive route to go and probably not for most people. But the second method is brazing or silver solder, soldering, different, whatever you want to call it. But you can do that very cheaply uh, depending on how you want to do it and you can step up to better setups uh, as you go. Now what I use is I have this little oxyacetylene jeweler's torch. Now this uses a couple of small HVAC sized gas bottles. Now this is not necessary if you want to braze. You don't have to, this torch was about $120 plus the bottles which were about another $100. But you can just go to like Home Depot or Lowe's and get the little small bottle set up and those bottles you could probably do about a chassis worth of uh, brazing with one of those bottle setups. So you can probably step into that for under $50 and that is by far the cheapest route to go. Now what you actually need to do the uh, brazing is silver solder it's called. Now you can get this on homedepot.com which is actually pro for probably one of the cheapest prices. It's uh, They sell it in the troy ounce. 
This is Harris Safety, or well, Stay Silve. I think they call it Safety Silve on there. Uh, S I L V. And I think this is the 45 or the 56 percent copper or percent silver versions. Now, for one ounce, it's about thirty dollars, which is about enough to do a chassis. So. Uh, factor that into the cost of building something if you want to go that route. So I'm going to show you a couple examples here on video. I've actually already TIG welded this joint. I'm going to show you a video of that and then I'm going to do a video of uh, this top joint here with the uh, torch and solder. So we attached the C-pillar with two different methods of fabricating. We did the lower joint with the TIG welder and then the upper joint with some silver solder and the uh, uh, oxyacetylene torch. Now I want to try and give you as close a look at these two joints and the differences as I can. So this is the brazed version. Now there's a little bit of uh, just residual on there, but that will clean up very well. You can just kind of scuff it clean. And see that it's a very solid joint. It flows very well and it matches up very nicely. Now, this the other three tubes that came in here, those were TIG welded together first. So um, you will see a little bit of that TIG weld residual, you know, that style back on the other side there. But that, uh, that goldish color, that is what the actual uh, solder is and it flows nicely all the way around that joint. That joint will be just as strong as probably any of the other joints on this chassis. Alright, now this is my lower joint. This is the TIG welded one. You can see that it, uh, it flows in there nicely as well. It's a fairly simple way to do this and it's also very fast. So um, you don't have to hold things as long or as steady. You can get them in line tack it together and then everything flows very nicely and it's very easy. That is why that is my preferred method. That gives us a look at the two styles of welds. Obviously a cheaper way to go to do this one initially. The initial investment is much cheaper. However, over time, having to buy that safety silve all the time adds up. But you have to build a lot of chassis to overcome the investment of that TIG welder if this is all you're doing. So don't try and use that to just rationalize the cost. But uh, as far as how clean the joints are, the braze joint is probably cleaner, but that is likely also uh, partly due to my uh, inexperience in welding. If I was a better TIG welder, you could probably make this look just as good as that all day is, long. Uh, a little bit of an overview of how I do these chassis. Like I said, I wanted to do this video over again since I did the last one, and uh, I just wanted to show a little bit more in depth on the uh, the processes I use to build these things so that's what we got started this build last night and I think I'll probably have a pretty good handle on it by the end of today so I'm uh, really looking forward to this little truck going to uh, gonna be a fun little I'm gonna call it the woods runner scout 800 woods runner just like the full size and hopefully it uh, turns out just as cool looking as that guy so uh, anyway guys subscribe to the channel facebook.com slash Harley designs Hope this video was helpful to some of you, or at least gave you some more information to uh, help you decide the route you want to take if you decide you want to build a chassis ever. So, we'll see you guys later.